Throughout this course, we'll be learning how to create clear, concise, accessible technical documents in a variety of formats and to meet any rhetorical situation. First, though, we need to establish a foundation of what technical communication is and what the most important considerations are when you're creating technical documents. In some ways, technical communication builds on the fundamentals of writing skills you learned in your rhetoric and composition course, the prerequisite for this course. However, whereas the academic essays you learned to write in that class were intended for an academic audience, primarily consisting of your professors, the technical documents you will be writing in this class and later on the job will need to be tailored for the exact audience and purpose for which they are being created. Though the language, level of detail, document format, and tone of a technical document will differ greatly from one rhetorical situation to the next, there are some essential considerations that can be applied to technical communication across the board. Technical communication is, first of all, user-centered. And what I mean by that is that your primary concern when writing a technical document is the audience. You're trying to get some set of information across to a particular audience. And more than anything else, you are concerned with what you need to do to best get that information to the audience in the most clear, uh, understandable, and um, concise way. Just as technical communication is user-centered, it is also purpose-driven. Any technical document will have a purpose. If you're writing a set of instructions, your purpose will, of course, be to teach the reader how to perform some action. If you're writing to inform the reader about some incident that occurred, then, of course, your purpose is to provide that information. You may be writing to inform the reader of um, some problem and then provide a recommendation for that problem. There are any number of purposes that may occur in the technical communication world, but it's important that you always keep your purpose in mind and that everything that you write in a technical document is geared towards that particular purpose. Technical communication is also organization dependent, and that just means that each uh, business each organization is going to have its own particular goals, its own um, organizational tone, its own guidelines and set of rules that the employees must adhere to. And you have to keep that in mind anytime you are writing a technical document as an employee of that particular organization. Technical communication is also accessible and visual. Whereas in um, rhetoric and composition, you were focusing on writing academic essays, and so you had to lay each essay out in essay format, meaning you would double space, you would use a standard font that would remain consistent throughout the entire essay, you would use paragraphs and indent the first line of each paragraph. In technical documents, your concern is readability, accessibility, it is trying to aid the reader in skimming the document, it is trying to aid the reader in quickly finding the snippet of information in your document that may be relevant to their purposes. And so you will be using things like headings, you will be using things like bullet points, you will be um, working towards creating a document that is very clear and easy to access for your reader. Finally, technical communication is clear and concise. All of these things that we've been discussing so far have to do with trying to um, be as clear as possible, how to get the information across to your reader in a way that he or she will be able to quickly understand. It's important that you keep in mind that when you're creating technical documents, your audience is likely very, very busy. A large percentage of the technical documents that you may create will be read within a period of just a minute or two. And it's essential that that reader can understand immediately, does not have to reread sentences, does not have to wade through um, a lot of extra language that doesn't need to be there. 
So keep in mind that um, there are not length requirements in technical documents. Out in the real world, your concern is getting the information across or convincing the reader of your recommendation. Your purpose is not to, uh, to sh demonstrate that you can write a 10-page paper. Your purpose is not to show off your vocabulary skills. Your purpose is not to show off how intelligent you are. Your purpose is to get the information across to the audience. And that requires clarity and that requires concision. On your screen now, you'll see a list of examples of types of technical documents. Whether or not you've ever heard the term technical document or technical communication or technical writing before, you have actually been exposed to a variety of technical documents in your lifetime. It's important that you are aware now that these types of communications are technical documents and that the way a brochure is laid out, the way a flyer is laid out, the way an instruction manual is laid out, these are all things that you'll be wanting to think about when you're creating your own technical documents. You've probably encountered a great variety of good technical documents in your lifetime and you've probably encountered a great variety of very poor technical documents in your lifetime. You can learn from all of these previous experiences and apply that knowledge to your own creation of technical documents in this class and in your future career. In the next section of Lesson 1, we'll be looking a little bit more closely at some examples of technical documents, and we'll be talking about them in relation to the key considerations that we've discussed in this lecture.